Texas insiders are buzzing about the potential flip of DeCorian Moore from LSU. In this video, we're going to find out if LSU fans should be worried about losing their number one ranked wide receiver. We've got Shay Dixon here. We're going to break it all down. But first, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. I was first to predict Bryce Underwood at LSU, so that's good enough for a subscribe. Go ahead, hit it right now. All right, bring on Shay Dixon from the Bengal Tiger. We're going to get to this potential more flip in a minute. I want to talk about the big news that happened this week. Alexandria four-star running back JT Lindsay was offered by LSU this week, and the predictions have been rolling in. But, Shay, this is a little confusing to me because we know Harlem Barry is committed. He's the number one running back in America. But you've been on this show and suggesting that, hey, James Simon – could be the next running back to commit in that two spot, but now JT Lindsey there. So talk about how you seeing the uh, LSU RB2 spot shaken out. Yeah, look, I think this is as much about Lindsey as Simon. We know that James Simon, a top 10 running back nationally, is taking a number of visits, at least eight he has uh, between the months of March and April. And then from there, probably official visits. So his process will continue to play out. And I think that you look at a guy like JT Lindsey, Josh, and more often than not, almost always, LSU's main focus or one of them is keeping the best players at home in Louisiana. And I think in the portal era, that's probably even more important when guys aren't getting playing time or, you know, need some development. They're not going to leave as quickly or enter the portal as quickly if they're from Louisiana or East Texas and they have family around and you know, can get home on the weekends, things like that. It's stuff that Brian Kelly and the staff have talked about in a big way. I think that's why it makes sense to continue to go after Louisiana guys. Now, Mm -hmm. JT Lindsay's no slouch. When he made his debut in the rankings, nobody had him ranked at all. On three debuts him in not just the on 300, the top 150, the number 11 running back in the country, a top five player in Louisiana, that's about as good as it gets. And with those, that ranking alone usually has an LSU offer right next to it. Then you look what he did on the field. Josh, this is a guy who had 18, 1900 yards uh, rushing this past season as a junior. He went for 28 touchdowns. He's got verified track speed. He's got the size. So I think it's as much about Lindsey and, and Frank Wilson, LSU's running backs coach, who's been around this state for a long time and knows it as good as any coach out there saying, look, we want the best guys to stay home. JT Lindsay can play in the SEC at this level, and he wants to be here. He told me that when he got the offer this week, Josh, that it was a dream come true uh, and that he had been kind of wanting this one since he was a kid. So I put my on three RPM pick in for LSU at a a high confidence score, uh, and I don't think it'll take long for them to reel Lindsay in. You pair him with Harlem Barry, the number one running back in the country, and you've got the number one and 11 running backs on the on three rankings. You'll take it. It doesn't mean Simon's offer still isn't there. He could commit at any point he wants to. He can join the class whenever he wants. But I like this from LSU because let's say James Simon doesn't go to LSU and then JT Lindsay's recruitment takes off. Now you're battling for him. I think that they made their evals. They trusted it. They stuck with it. They didn't wait for the spring window. They didn't get him into summer camp. They didn't say, let's see what Simon does. They trusted their evals and said, let's go after a player that we think think can make an impact at this level. And they offered JT Lindsay. This was probably some of the biggest news of the month for LSU. Yeah. And I think it's all this is all able to be done because Harlan Barry is already committed. You have a elite back already locked in your class. Now let's go and hey, do they have room for both? I mean, could you see a scenario where they both end up signing with LSU? I can, yes, because LSU does not have a deep running back room right now. They're Mm -hmm. coming off a year where they signed only one in Caden Durham uh, coming out of Texas. So, yes, I could see this being a class where they land three or potentially at least want to add three because they would take all three of these guys. Again, three of them all ranked in the top 11 at their position in the country. All are calling Louisiana home. So, yes, I think all three have the green light. We'll see what Simon and Lindsey do. All right. Let's talk about it. Number one wide receiver, DeCorian Moore. And on Wednesday, on the inside scoop, Justin Wells of Inside Texas was on. And he, well, actually, Trey, just play the clip. We're pretty optimistic. Um, And to tell you the truth, we've been optimistic for a while. Um, You know, when you recruit, when you commit early in your junior year, that team becomes the target. So instead of recruiting the kid, a lot of times, I think schools, you know, fall in the trap of recruiting against the school recruiting against LSU. And that's tough in this cycle 
Bryce Underwood, Harlem Berry, DeCorian Moore. That, that they've been incredible. But with DeCorian, I think there's a sense of staying closer to home is going going to be the the way to go. Um, I don't think anything's imminent. I, I feel like he's solid at LSU. I feel like he could see yeah. himself playing at LSU if he needed to. And as you and I have discussed before, the season's got to play out a lot of times to, to see what happens in November and December in that early signing period. But for more in Texas, it just makes too much sense. He's been there too many times. He's gotten he's, – he's become so much closer with Steve Sarkeesian and Chris Jackson. His mother, his family has become close to this staff. He's supposed to return for the spring game if he can get out – if he can – uh, finish up his regional track meet that morning. That's going to be iffy. He'll be back in Austin late, likely late, uh, late J- June for his official visit. He's going to be at Ohio State this yeah. weekend. Uh, Steve Wiltfong posted that yesterday. He's going to be there. Ohio State, Oregon, Texas, LSU. Those are really the four schools. All right, Shay. So you hear it. There's a lot of optimism out in Austin that DeCorian Moore is going to flip. Last week, he took a visit to Texas. This weekend, he's at Ohio State. So he has started taking some trips. Maybe that's what the buzz is all about. But, Shay, do you think that LSU fans have anything to worry about when it comes to number one wide receiver DeCorian Moore? You know, I think the worry level, Josh, is that Justin talked about is the same as when he committed. I mean, let's go back and set the stage to August when it was Colin Simmons and Caden Durham, two rising seniors at Duncanville, who were making their announcement, and there was some buzz that LSU might be able to snag both. Simmons ends up staying home in Texas, signs with the Longhorns, and Durham signed with LSU, and they both announced for those teams that day. A few days later, DeCorian Moore comes out, a junior at Duncanville, or a rising junior now yeah. uh, at the time, says, I'm ready to commit. And everything had pointed to Texas up to that point. His family has ties to Texas. They'd grown up fans. He's got a lot of family in the area. But the buzz wasn't on Texas. It was suddenly, oh, he's announcing now. That's a surprise to Texas, but not to LSU. LSU reels him in. He reveals, hey, look, I've loved LSU forever. Odell Beckham was my childhood hero, kind of on the football field growing up, who I emulate my game after, uh, obviously an LSU graduate, and said uh, with kind of bought in before the season, saying, I want to be a part of what LSU's done with their receivers over time. And Match them up. I mean, draft-wise, LSU has had a lot more receivers drafted over the past 20 years than Texas has. That's just the facts. And that was a big pitch for LSU. Then LSU goes out and finishes with the number one offense in America. They have a Heisman winner in Jaden Daniels. Malik Neighbors up for the Bolitnikov sets LSU's career uh, record for both catches and receiving yards. So you've put yourself in an even better spot, it felt like, for DeCorian Moore. Then comes a commitment from Bryce Underwood, the number one quarterback. Then Harlem Berry, the number one running back. LSU had this number, has this number one class. They've been going back and forth with Ohio State. Mm-hmm. And it felt like, okay, that only strengthens, strengthens the grip on Moore. I say all that to say this. He's now taking visits. That was expected. He said he was going to do it. He said he would take official visits. So no shock to see him around Texas. He's now made a couple of visits over there. Is it worrisome? Sure. You would wish he would take no visits, but right. that doesn't often happen for a number one player like him at receiver. So I think it's still one of those things where as an LSU fan, you view it as, man, we grabbed him away from Texas when they thought he was a lock. Now it's on Texas to try to flip him and keep him home, which is obviously tougher to do than just get him when he's uncommitted. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not putting him in the category where I think he's going to come back from Ohio state and decommit and open things up. But I 100% say, If I'm an LSU fan, I'm monitoring where does he lock in official visits to? When is he going to say he's done with recruitment? Uh, Because I'll wind it down by saying this. Not often do these kids do that when you're the number one player in the country. Bryce Underwood, the number one overall player in the country and quarterback, is back on LSU's campus this weekend for the spring game, committed in January. February was a dead period. Came to campus in March. Flew back again now in April. Still has an official visit. And he has said, I have not stepped foot on another campus and don't plan to. So you feel great about that. I think with Moore, we knew this was coming in terms of visits just because he had said it from the start. I'm committed, but there will be a time where I want to go see other schools. Yeah. And I think at this point of the recruitment, like you said, a lot of this is expected, but you also want to see LSU kind of go tit for tat with these visits. So when's the next time you expect DeCorey Moore back in Baton Rouge? 
Well, he's at Ohio State this weekend, so the spring game and all that, that ends for LSU this week. I wouldn't be shocked if he made one more official, unofficial visit in either April or early May. And right now, late May is when he has said he's probably going to take his official visit to LSU. Mm -hmm. Do they try to push that back and do it later in June, maybe get the last visit before July's dead period? I'm not sure. But at this point, I do think he gets back to campus before that official visit. So sometime in the next month. If you're an LSU fan and, uh, you know, hey, hold on tight. That's all I can say about this recruitment to DeCorian, of DeCorian Moore. But like you said, he committed to LSU for a reason. He's remained committed to LSU for a reason. None of these visits are unexpected. But as he takes these trips, the buzz, the the what you hear from the streets kind of starts to, to percolate. And you got insiders at Texas that are confident that a flip is going to happen down the road. We will just have to wait and see. Shay Dixon from the inside, or Shay Dixon from the Bengal Tiger. Appreciate you dropping by the inside scoop today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Josh. Thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed that, go check out the hundreds of videos that we have on this channel. And also do me a favor, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel.